team. Today we're going to be talking equipment, the gear I use all day, every day. Um, I get a lot of questions on Instagram, YouTube, via email and my newsletter, you know, what pens do you use, what pencils do you use, and today I'm going to be detailing in detail um, all those elements that I use, all those bits of equipment that I use all day, every day, like I said. So, um, and I might also, well not might, I definitely will be putting some little quick drawing ticks in uh, just to break up um, the monotony of me talking. So, um, let's get it on. Absolutely soaking wet. Da, 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 da. It's raining pens. So, firstly, before I start, check out how cool this pencil case is. From the Lincoln Boys and Sand. I mean, what happened? I mean, I'd live in that. So, um, get it. Um, so, firstly, pencils. Um, I have. A few variants on the pencils I like to use. Um, one, two, three, four. So yeah, basically this is an old one of this. So I'm going to pop this one down the side here. So this guy, you've probably seen this in a lot of my um, sketches, drawings, process videos, and all the rest of it. It's the Rotary 800 0.5 mil. Um, this is this is the the worker. This is the one that does basically everything. Um, the reason I the reason I like it is because it's um, it's a perfect weight. I mean, I've gone through a fair few amount of pencils, uh, but I find that this one's got a really nice balance to it. Uh, so, like a lovely weight, and that really helps with my pencil control and all of that stuff. So, yeah, the Rotary 800 0.5. I then also got as like a little backup to that, the Rotary 600 0.7, slightly thicker lead. Um, this will probably work on something that doesn't need so much detail going on. Um, but I say, this is more of a backup to the 800 that I use there. Um, and then I've also got my Rotary Rapid Pro 2.0. That rhymes, Timmy. That does rhyme, doesn't it? Rapid Pro 2.0. Um, this is the one I would generally start to, if I was going to do some sort of custom type, um, like if you check out the wild patch video, this is the one I used first. It's a much thicker, um, thicker lead so I can be slightly more free with it. And then I would use this one to go over the top of it. Um, so yeah, the Rotary Rapid Pro 2.0 and they are all in HB. So um, yeah, I think that would be a fantastic time, Timmy, to guess what time it is, Timmy. Time is it, James? It's it's tip it Timmy time. Tip it Timmy time. Let's do it. Tit. Tit, yeah. <laughs> so on a lot of my kind of Instagram posts, you might be seeing a lot of a lot of these. Um, thinking I've probably done it for some sort of show off, make the page look cool. Oh, oh, you know, I'm going to have to start again now. But what I'm actually doing is I'm putting an angle on the lead. So if I do it the same consistently, what I can now know is when I come to doing my colouring in and my shading, I get a very, very consistent colour and grain on my shade. Whereas if I was doing it with the other edge, for example, you get a hard bit and then you start to find the edge of it. So that's a great tip. Every time you want to start shading something, just kind of find an edge, make it nice and angled. I don't know if you can see that, Timmy. So that angle, that angle makes your image shading so much easier. So um, there's a little tip for you. So now we're on to pens. Uh, firstly, I must apologise for the tip at Timmy Malarkey. We had we couldn't stop laughing about that, so we had to do something with it. But now we're here again. We're here. It's fine. So pens. Um, firstly, I will go with these ones. Um, these again, use them all day, every day. Well, not all day, every day, but you know, a good good few hours. Um, 
These are great. These are the Molotow Black Gliders. Um, they come in multiple weights, so everything from a, I've got a 0.05 here, 0.1, 0.3, 0.5, 0.9, it will come in a set, uh, but obviously gradiated all the way up. Um, these are fantastic pens, I find they really work well with the paper that I use in the sketchbook. Um, again, a really nice weight, not too heavy, not too light, so the control's really good. Um, and that is that for those. So yeah, just to recap, they are the Molotow Black Liners. Um, get them on Amazon, um, get them anywhere. They are really, really, really good. Everybody always needs a Sharpie in their, in their set of pencils and pens. Um, don't use it very often. Often use it to scribble on the table if there's something I want to remember. Um, or I use it to mark my notebooks. Uh, this is a, uh, a notebook full of Instagram content ideas and things I want to talk about and write about. So I use it to mark the sketchbook. Um, so yeah, Sharpies are great just for those random occasions when you need a heavy black ink. Um, these dudes are awesome. So, oh, Molotone. So when it comes to um, creating some hand-drawn scripts, especially when it comes to some sort of handwritten, some sort of calligraphy, maybe some sort of you know, brush stroke that I want to create, I will tend to use these guys. Um, they're the best I've found. Um, there's probably a load more, but these are the ones I use. They are called a name that I can't pronounce. Guana? Guangana. Gorangana. Um, but yeah, they're fantastic pens, uh, come in lots of different weights, fantastic for brush strokes. Again, super cool weight, lovely to control, feel great in the hand, and comfort's such an important thing when you, yeah, for example, like you might not like any of these. You might think, oh, I'll go and get some, but you might actually not get on with them. It's all about like muscle memory, using them, knowing the weight, having the control of the pen, and all of that jazz. And Timmy, do you know what that, that brings on again, doesn't it? It's Tip It Timmy! It's Tip It Timmy time! Let's get some tips, Timmy, going. Timmy, Tip It, Timmy, Tit. Let's go, Tip. So, this is a little pen tip. Um, this is actually a little technique that I learned while I was doing my tattoo apprenticeship. Um, you know, because you don't want to be messing up lines on somebody's body when they're going to be staying with them forever. I don't think that's such a good idea, is it? Not a good idea. Um, but what I used to do, obviously, when I was drawing a line, I would draw a line like so, and then if I wanted to continue the line, I would do that. I would start at the ends. And obviously, when it comes to ink, you get these little sections here where it looks disconnected. Um, so a really, really useful tip is the fact that, say if you've got your line like so, you actually start halfway up that same line. So you can start to keep a constant line which does not have any breaks in it. So rather than this, 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 you're doing a much more smooth transition so your line looks solid and filled and continuous. So let's talk about paper. One of my weirdly most favourite subjects on the planet. I'm a big, big fan of paper. Um, firstly, I always have my own little blasey, little notebook um, that I carry around with me. I've got a few under my desk there. I've got one by the side of my bed. Um, and I generally take them everywhere. I think I've got a couple in the car. And they're great for just jotting down super quick little ideas. So this is like a A6 blasey notebook. Um, and it looks pretty damn cool, which I like too. Um, so there's that. So that's kind of like an everyday carry, an EDC, I think the cool kids like to call it. Um, then I can move on to my notebook. 
Um, so this is actually quite a new one I've just started. But basically this is the one that I write all my lists down for the day, deeper ideas, um, yeah, um, basically anything that pops into my head while I'm in front of my computer. This one generally stays in my bag, by my computer, by my laptop inside. Um, and it's just where I basically scribble my daily brain. Um, so that's that in there. Um, this is a really cool company, they're called Dingbats. Um, yeah, again, just super handy for my Lincoln pen. Little Lincoln shout out there. Um, yeah, just really nice paper, nice to work in and you know, it kind of makes me look professional, which is very important considering I'm very not professional. Um, very not, I can't even very speak very well, can I? Um, then, the most important beast. The sketchbook. The sketchbook of truth and justice. This is probably one of the biggest questions, apart from what pencil do you use, is what um, sketchbook do I use? And it is the, um, Studio um, sketchbook A3 size by Artway with a wire, um, wire. Uh, what would you call it? Bind. Binder. Yeah, wire binder because that's obviously allows me to be able to turn the pages. And obviously, in a big thick sketchbook with a nice thick paper, you know, as soon as you start kind of turning it, you start to lose more and more and more <laughs> of your paper on the other side. So yeah, this is. Um, the reason I love this, I mean, you can see here, I mean, me and Timmy will probably take a shot of it after this, but there's just over the last two years, I can count close to maybe 30 sketchbooks, which I've gone through. I love them and they're all the same. Um, paper's great, takes the ink well, takes uh, the lead well for the pencil, um, thick enough so, the, so it doesn't bleed. Um, and so when I say bleeding, that means the ink going through to the other side of the page. Um, yeah, just a fantastic sketchbook with fantastic paper. Um, so I would definitely, definitely, definitely get one of these. Light box. Um, one of the, and this is another thing that I learnt um, going through my tattoo apprenticeship, um, the importance of layering up images, um, and using a light box to do so. I mean, when I was a very, very, very poor student, um, I used to use um, the window as my light box. So I'd have, um, yes, yeah, so I'd have two pieces of paper. Two pieces of paper like so, with the one I was, one I had my rough sketch and then the sketch I wanted to do, I then use my masking tape to pin that up onto the, onto the window itself and I would use that as my light box. But um, I've kind of grown up a little bit since then, invested in my light box. Um, and I said, they're a great way of being able to layer up your rough sketches so you can create a really scrappy R shape and then go over it again, create a more detailed, with a, you can even grid it up with your ruler or whatever. But these are just such a great way of, um, it's basically like Illustrator, but with your hand not a computer. So um, that's, that's basically it. Um, but yeah, they're really fantastic ways of, as I say, layering up your sketches, developing your drawing skills, uh, and obviously using references. I mean, you would have seen my, when did we do the type one, Timmy? We did the type one last time, wasn't Episode it? Episode five. Episode five, yeah. So you can see how I took a type, uh, uh, sans serif, you know, standard type, from the computer, use my light box and then draw over it to create my own unique serif face typeface. So that is great. The light box is great for stuff like that. Um, one, ah, oh, Timmy, I almost forgot Margaret. Never forget Margaret. Never forget the Maggie, um, the Iron Lady. <laughs> um, sorry, that's a very old, for any youngsters out there, just look up the Iron Lady, you'll get it. Um, so, my favorite ruler, I've got a few of these from Diddy to middle, so super large. I mean, that is overkill. Um, I would generally never use that. I can't remember the last time I used it, <laughs> actually. <laughs> it it's just in the office. Um, but this one I use a fair bit as well. This is like the 30 centimeter, um, 12 inch um, metal ruler. 
you can get these anywhere. Um, I say Amazon's great, um, but this is the one I tend to use the most of. You know, I actually named her Margaret. She's my best friend. And again, the reason why I like to use this is because of the space that I work in. I find it easier to work like this with more control than work like this. Feels a bit clumsy and it's also a bit heavy. Uh, whereas she is light, fantastic and full of fun. So um, that is why everybody needs a Margaret. So yeah, it's a six inch uh, stainless, stainless steel ruler, um, which should be in every logo designer's kit. Oh, and before I forget, um, there's these guys as well, who I've been chatting to a lot recently. Very cool little Kickstarter project, um, the Horizon Ruler. Um, I've used it a little bit. I mean, I'm still very fascinated with Margaret, but this is also actually really good and it worked really well for me at the sizes I want to work at. Um, and you can do all sorts of cool stuff with this. So yeah, go check them out online. Uh, yeah, the Horizon Ruler. Very, very cool. And hey, it fits in your wallet and looks pretty badass. Um, and do you know what? Oh God, not again. Tit. We're going to tit it up. So this is going to be the final tip it Timmy tit tip for the day. So let's take just for example, you know, a triangle. This is, this is a little tip which will really speed up your, your shading. Um, it's something that you would have probably seen a few times on my time lapses um, or anything like that. But I've kind of got my slightly wonky triangle there, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the ruler and put it at the base of my line. And then that allows me to have total freedom of the sketch. I don't have to worry about hitting the line. I can just go crazy. I can go up here. And what you can see is that I have not gone over the edge. And it's a super, super simple, cool way of just being able to quickly color in. Some people might just think it's an absolute waste of time, but I'll tell you what, when you don't have to get your rubber out, rubbers waste time. So there you go. That is how to draw to an edge with perfection. So that's it, my friends. Um, that is a whole breakdown with some little Timmy tips um, dropped in there to help you with your drawing skills. If you want any of that gear, I've actually got a gear page on my website, um, www.madebyjames forward slash gear. Timmy will put it like here for you. Um, but I'll be back in Jan with some new coolness. Have a good one.